The 23rd film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as the final MCU movie of both 2019 and Phase 3 has been released, and I saw it. In this video, I will be reviewing Spider-Man Far From Home without spoilers for a couple minutes, but for the most part, it will be with spoilers because I don't really like reviewing things without spoilers, but uh, I will give a spoiler warning, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, you should probably stop watching this video by the spoiler warning, and then come back once you've already seen the movie. So uh, let's just get into my spoiler-free review, in which I think that this is a great follow-up to both Spider-Man Homecoming and way more so Avengers Infinity War and even more so than that Avengers Endgame where in Endgame Tony, Tony died. This movie handles that pretty well, the aftermath of that, how Peter deals with that, how the world dealt with that, how the world dealt with the, what they're calling now the blip, which is the snapping happening in uh, Infinity War and Endgame. I really think this movie did a good job at handling all of that. I think that this movie has got a great villain. It's not, I'm not going to spoil who it is. It's pretty obvious based off the trailers, based off what we've been told about the movie, but the trailer didn't really tell us who the, who the villain is really so I guess I, I can't really spoil that anyway he's a great villain the villain of this movie is one of the best in the Marvel Cinematic Universe he his powers what he brings to the table it just looks great and his motivation how he connects to the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole it just works so well and he's a great villain speaking of his powers I think that visually this is quite possibly the best Marvel Cinematic Universe movie ever I don't think any movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe looks as good especially Spider-Man Far From Home, it's mostly because of the villain's powers, and other than that, it's the suit that Spider-Man wears, the swinging around, the action, and it just all looks so incredible. This isn't my favorite movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I think visually, it is the best looking. Which is pretty ironic considering how terrible the poster for this movie looks. I mean, this, it's just such a terrible poster, which doesn't reflect the look of the movie very well at all. Because this movie looks incredible in terms of the visuals, it is the best Marvel movie. In terms of out, everything outside of the visuals, it's definitely up there as one of the great ones. Anyway, that's the end for my spoiler-free review. I'm not going to give a score right now. If you want to know the score, then I guess uh, watch the movie, come back and watch the end of this video because I do give a score. But but the score isn't really important, it probably will change over time. But anyway, this is my spoiler warning, and if you haven't seen the movie yet, you should probably stop watching this video if you care about spoilers. Anyway, let's get into the spoiler review. So I want to start the spoiler part of this video talking about the visuals I was praising so much. This movie, like I said, is probably the best looking Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, movie ever, and that mostly comes from the illusion scenes. The illusions from Mysterio, or Quentin Beck, who is the main villain of this movie, I'll get to him in a minute, and what I thought about him as a character, which you already know because I talked about that in my spoiler free portion. Anyway, the illusions that he uses, and not only that, but his suit and his powers that he uses outside of the illusions, they look incredible. There's this one sequence of events you saw the movie if, you've, if you're watching at this point that looks incredible where Mysterio is using his illusion powers on Spider-Man and he just goes through like a couple minutes of these insane looking backgrounds and this insane environment that he's in that nothing really makes any sense. A lot of things are happening and just visually it looks incredible. It really feels like a boss level of a video game where you're like Scarecrow for instance from the Arkham games and I love that so much. I think it works so well. Visually, it's incredible. I think that the, the way they use Mysterio's powers in this movie make him such an interesting villain. Not only that, but the the actor who played him, Jake Gyllenhaal, does such a great job in the role. Again, his costume is awesome. It's quite possibly it's one of the best costumes in the MCU, which is insane because Mysterio in general has always been thought to be like a, a pretty lame costume with the fishbowl, but I think it looks amazing on screen. It's one of the most comic book accurate costumes ever. It looks incredible. Not only that, but I love his motivation. Motivation. It's very similar to Adrian Toomes or the Vulture uh, in its connection to uh, Tony Stark And I guess every vi main villain of these movies I guess maybe the first trilogy of the spider-man MCU movies will all, all all the villains will have their motivation Connected to Tony Stark, which I don't mind that I think it works I don't really want the third one to be but I think for the Vulture and Mysterio It worked really really well for the Marvel Cinematic Universe and this version of both spider-man and Iron Man I absolutely love how they how the the, the twist which I did predict and I'm sure a lot of people predicted this as well, but I was pretty much on the money for Mysterio. In my first trailer breakdown for Spider-Man Far From Home, I predicted that since Mysterio is pretty clearly the villain of this movie, since he is a villain, I predicted that the elementals like Hydro-Man and Sandman and Multiman, whoever the wind-based guy was, I guess uh, Cyclone, I'm pretty sure that's what they called him. Anyway, I predicted that they were all illusions created by Mysterio so that he can pretend to be a hero, so that he can be a hero in the public eye. I was pretty close. That was basically what his motivation was. 
was he created these elementals using his uh, he, using his technology, which I didn't even know was Barf, which that was insane. I love that connection to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not only that with Barf from Civil War, but also the character from Iron Man. That was insane. Like that whole sequence of events. It's a, basically a huge exposition dump, but they did it so well that I didn't care. I was I, it was so exciting. Anyway, getting back to the twist with, with Mysterio, the fact that he created all these elementals with his technology, which is the same technology from Civil War. They're all fake. The whole story about him being from another universe is fake. The multiverse as a whole has yet to be introduced in the MCU at this point, but Mysterio created all these things so that he can be a hero, so that he can become the next Iron Man, so that he can get back at Tony Stark and get Edith, which is the big uh, MacGuffin of this movie, which that part of it I didn't love, how there was the MacGuffin the whole time, but it didn't really take away from it. It's my, that problem with the movie is mostly nitpicky, but although I do think that the twist was fairly predictable based off the fact that I did predict it, I still think it worked really well. Like, it was really exciting when all of that was happening. Like, everyone knew Mysterio was the bad guy. Everyone knew Mysterio was going to, uh, I guess, uh, go behind Peter's back or do something to trick him, but the way they executed, the way they got to that, it was still so exciting, and it was kind of unexpected as well. Just the way they went about it with, uh, with Mysterio, just, like, a very early into the movie. I thought it would be later but it was pretty early in to the movie, revealed himself as the villain, revealed his motivation, his connection to the MCU and the Iron Man, and his plan as a whole, and I think it worked so well. It ended up making Mysterio a great villain, not only in his motivation and his backstory, which I love both of those things, but also his costume and his powers and the actor, Jake Gyllenhaal. I think that Mysterio is a great villain, and it really worked for this movie. In terms of whether or not he's better than Vulture, I think that visually, the, what his powers, what he brings to the movie, 100% percent he's so much more interesting and also the fight scenes in this movie are a lot better than homecoming i think i like vulture a little better as a villain overall but i think mysterio adds a lot more to the movie in terms of the visuals so maybe i guess i would rather mysterio over vulture they're pretty close neck and neck so i think that spider-man overall so far in the two movies have had some of the best villains in the marvel cinematic universe and only infinity war and endgame have had better villains in Thanos, but uh, I'll, I'll just move on for now from Mysterio and the visuals of this movie. A huge uh, plot point of this movie is the aftermath of Endgame. There's the blip, there's also Tony's death. The blip, which is the snapping, which in the universe they now called the blip, is the fact that half the universe was erased from existence and now five years later they are back. That was looked at in a much more lighthearted and funny way, which I don't mind that at all. I mean, Endgame was a very serious movie in the way they looked at all of that, as well as this movie being a lot more serious than I think Homecoming, but also this part of the movie, which is funny and the way they look at it, it's funny. I don't mind that at all. I think that it works pretty well, but the way they look at Tony's death and the pressure of who needs to be the next Iron Man, that made for some pretty great uh, plot points, it made for some pretty great emotional moments with Peter, it made for a pretty great uh, satisfying ending to the movie, where it seems like Peter Parker and Spider-Man as a whole kind of move away from Iron Man and become uh, his own individual hero, which I really like that as well. So that's something about this movie I really like. There's not a lot in this movie I don't like, there's really like two things. And I'll touch on the things I don't like in this movie briefly because I'd rather not be too negative. But I, there were, and also there wasn't really much of it. Namely, it's the it's the classmates of Peter's. Like they were easily not only the most boring parts of the movie, but they were all significantly less interesting than they were in the last movie. Like Ned, for instance, was way less funny here than in, compared to Homecoming, where he was a much better character, a much more funny character, a much more significant character. Here, he didn't really add much to the story at all, and he wasn't really. That that funny, or he wasn't as funny as the last time. I don't love uh, MJ in this movie and the relationship or uh, love interest uh, aspect of that with Peter. I don't think their chemistry really works all that well, and the fact that she's not a love interest from the comics. I don't love that aspect of it either. Those are really the only things in this movie I don't like. There is also one scene, the scene where uh, Peter gets the glasses, gets Edith, and by mistake orders a drone strike, a strike against Brad. I felt like that scene was stupid. I really didn't like it. It wasn't funny at all, and it didn't make any sense. It just didn't add anything to the movie. Those are the things I didn't like about the movie. It didn't take away much from it, at least that one scene. It was just one scene, and the classmates in general, it was bearable because they, they kept on just going back to the interesting things like Peter or Mysterio or other characters. 
Another pretty big uh, thing in this movie is the quote-unquote Peter Tingle, which for most of the movie is played as a joke, which is the spider sense, which has been largely ignored in the previous MCU movies. It's there. It's pretty clear it's there. I mean, you look at Civil War, it's definitely there, but it's never been mentioned. It's never been a huge uh, thing in any of these movies. It was barely there in Homecoming. I don't think it was there at all, but now it's a pretty big plot point in this movie. It's played for a joke, a recurring joke for the most part, a joke for the most part of the movie, but then in the end, it's kind of used as the way he defeated Mysterio. He becomes Daredevil for a second, he uses the spider sense, he closes his eyes, and then he can't really be tricked by the illusions anymore, which I think that's pretty cool. I thought that was a great moment. Spider-Man felt pretty damn badass in that moment. I think for the most part, Spider-Man wasn't badass enough in this movie, but in the end, in the final fight, in the swinging scenes, and also in the end, like, after the final fight, when he's swinging around New York City, which that's the first time I've ever seen him swing around Manhattan, and it's so awesome to see. Spider-Man felt pretty badass in the last, like, 30 minutes, maybe the last third of this movie, which that was really exciting. The final fight overall was great. Mysterio was a great villain. Visually, this movie is amazing. It's really, really funny. And there's not much I don't like about this movie at all. So I think it is another home run for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is insane. I don't understand how they keep on doing this, especially with Spider-Man, where I don't think there was an incredible Spider-Man movie, or at least a Spider-Man movie that I loved until Homecoming and then Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and now Far From home and I think it's crazy how they keep on just not knocking it out of the park anyway I would probably give this movie around the 9.5 maybe a little bit higher than that it's definitely I think a little bit better than homecoming mostly because of the visuals and the added emotional weight they add with uh, Tony's death so I think it's definitely a little bit better than homecoming but I don't really know the actual score all I know is where I would put it in the ranking which is a video I think I will make pretty soon so I also want to say that the post credit scene, the first one with uh, the Daily Bugle, J. Jonah Jameson, played by J.K. Simmons, Spider-Man's identity being revealed, everything like that is quite possibly my favorite um, post credit scene in the entirety of the MCU. It's just so exciting. The end credit scene with Nick Fury and Murray, Murray Hill being revealed to be Skrulls is crazy, but it definitely wasn't as exciting as the first one. Still, though, I think these are two great end credit scenes that get me so excited for the future of the MCU with Spider-Man 3 and whatever they're doing with Nick Fury and Maria Hills uh, being uh, Maria Hill being scrolls. How long were they scrolls? Were they scrolls the entirety of this movie or the entirety of the MCU or at least for Nick Fury since Captain Marvel? I don't know, but I'm definitely interested in that. But I'm so excited. I'm beyond excited for Spider Man 3. I think er out of every single movie in the future of the world right now, going forward, the movie I'm most excited for is probably the third Spider Man movie following Spider Man Far From Home. And the second is probably The Batman, which is a movie I'm very excited for. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about this movie in the comments down below. I loved it. I thought it was one of the best in the MCU. Visually, it is the best. But let me know your thoughts. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.